eight years ago i can describe what life was like for me i was going through a terrible time in life i didn't know which way was forward i didn't know which way was backwards i was confused but thanks be unto god had it not been for those confusion and the trouble i was going through i would have been comfortable where i was but it was that trouble that drove me from where i was and i ran down to auchi looking for what i thought was a solution but unknown to me i was about to encounter my prophet people of god please celebrate my father celebrate god's servant celebrate grace my god glory to god i have one assignment today somebody say one assignment God sent me from Houston to handle the altars of your father's house. I came, I feel something. Oh, Shababaya. I came to handle that altar that has vowed that you will never move forward. In this service today, let God be true. Let every altar
one who knows if God has brought you into that family for such a time as this. You are the hope of your family. You are the Jerubah that will bring down the altar of Baal. You are the Jehovah that will pull down witchcraft and not here to one not to you. But the power of the Holy Ghost, every altar that stops your father, every altar that stops your mother, as you begin to pray, it will submit to you. It will submit to you. It will bow down to you. I don't know how long the altar has been existing, but if God be God, you will pull it down. We will pull it down. So he said that break has come. People of God, in the scripture we read, we found a man called David. The Bible says for seven years, when you read in preceding verses of, of 2 Samuel chapter 5, the Bible says David had reigned seven years in Hebron. Man of God, there was a call upon David to be the king of all 12 tribes. But when the anointing came upon David, he was able to get one, which is a tribe of Judah. Somebody said a tribe of Judah. But tribe of Judah is only one out of 12. So for seven years, David was managing one. But yet he had a grace to have everything. People of God, listen to me. How can a man who has a grace to have 12 nations, all he has now is one. The Bible said for seven years, he was held holding one. But upon a certain day, the Bible says... The elders of Israel, they came to anoint him. They poured oil on his head. And after that oil, he marched into a new dimension. Hey! After they anointed him, he moved to a new dimension. People of God, hear me. Anytime God wants to open you to your next level, he will send an elder to anoint you. Congratulate you, Lusaka. There is an ancestor, there is an elder coming from Nigeria. His name is Jesus Suleiman. He is coming. So I met you for your next level. Shady. Don't stand. Don't stand. You're going to mess me up. Your see now. I am mama. After seven years, the elders came. They said, David, you are overdue. You have been on this level far too long. Your new season is around the corner. But we came to anoint you. After that oil, David left the meeting. He approved destiny. I professor by the oil coming upon your head on Tuesday and Wednesday. You are marching to a new level. 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 A new level that eyes have not seen. That ears have not heard. The heart of man, what God will do, it shall be good measure, it shall be pressed down, it shall be shaken together, it shall be running over. Will the serve of the God? Will serve Almighty God? He's the same yesterday, He's the same today, He's the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can pull you down. God is on your side. Power on your side. Grace on your side. Set new level. Set new level. Set new level. Set new level. Run a rush and fire. Yeah, 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 yeah.
Just sit down. Just sit down so I can move forward. You keep on standing, I can't move forward. Watch this. move forward the Bible says after the elders of Israel came and they anointed him David staggered out of the woodland stadium and approached destiny I am mama I am mama after that two day encounter when the oil came from the elder he left the stadium he said my time has come and he went to the land of Jebus. Can I talk to you? The land of Jebus was going to become the headquarters of David's operation. Please, you sit down so I can go deeper. Now, listen. The elders, when they anointed him, until now, David was ruling in one nation. Meanwhile, God gave him dominion to take 12. The Bible said when he got there, the Bible says the land was occupied by the people called Jebus. Somebody said Jebus. Come and say Jebus. I want you to know that in the future, after David takes over the city, he renames it Jerusalem. It was not originally called Jerusalem. It was formerly called the city of the Jebus. But when he took the city, he rebranded it and called it Je I am Mama. I am trying to tell you that where God is taking you is not a vacant land. The promised land that God wants to give you. There are enemies occupying the land. There are giants occupying the land. But I like the word of Caleb. He said, if God is with me, I will drive out the giant. I came with the Holy Ghost anointed under the mantle of Suleiman. I come to your father's house. Every giant in your father's house, every giant in your hometown, holding your destiny, if you shout a loud amen, I drive them out. I drive them out. I drive them out. I drive them out. So look. Look. Now watch, 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 watch. The Bible says, when he got to the land, the gate was closed. I am my mama. When he got to the land, because it's important that David take this territory. Because the Bible says, after David takes this territory, the next thing we see in the life of David is Second Samuel chapter 5 and verse 10. He says, and David went on and grew great. His life began to change. All the doors began to open. Everything began to walk. There is a battle that you will win. After you win that battle, doors will open for you. On your left hand, it will open for you. On your right hand, child of God, that is the battle we came to fight today. The battle for your next level. The battle for your lifting. The battle for your settlement. And I am here under grace to confront every power and the case preventing you. In the name of Jesus, they will scatter. I, 
Are you okay so far? Are you following the narrative? When they got there, the Bible says, when David got to the gate, the gate was closed. Ayamama, this is you. Ayama, the gate was closed. It was at this gate, man of God, he wrote Psalm 24 and verse 7. Lift up your head, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Are we okay? Are we okay? Because David was about to enter glory. His glory was behind the gates. But between him and his glory, there was a strong power. The power of the gates, they resisted him. David said, open the gates. They said, David cannot come in. David cannot come in. They said it with their mouth that David cannot come in thinking that David cannot come in but my Bible says who is he that says a king and he cometh to pass when the Lord commands it not any power that he say no to your prophecy as you jump on your feet there we go down there we go down there we go now. There we go now. Oh, go now. Oh, go now. Oh, go now. Oh, go now. Please try to sit down. So we can go deeper. You know, this is Omega. We don't sell candle. We don't sell oil. We don't sell incense. We don't sell handkerchief. We teach you God's word. Follow me now, because we're about to enter the real one now. When he got to the gate, he said, lift up your head. The powers of the gate said, who are you? Are, are you understanding scriptures now? Because this was the junction that David needs to enter his glory. And the Bible said, the people of Jebus, they looked at him. How do you say, who are you in Zambia? Huh? Nue? Nuwe no wani. Nuwe wonani. Look at you. You are about to enter a dimension that your father could not enter. But the powers of the gates, they are saying mowa wani. You are, you are about to touch a level of wealth that nobody, Patana Matana, has been able to touch. And the altars in Lusaka, they are saying, Mowawane. But I am here to reply the altars of your father's house. The way David replied, he said the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle lift up your head hey 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 I need four brothers. Four brothers, please. Four brothers, just line here. Line here like that. Face me. Please understand this. This is you. This is your next level. People of God, between you 
and that glory. These are the altars of the gates. Powers of foundation. Because when it comes to destiny fulfillment, the number one corporate, it is altars for a man's enemy and members of his house. Can I talk to you? Altars and members of your house. Evil foundation and members of your house. Please sit down, church. So look at you. You are about to handle what no one has ever handled. You are about to enter a realm where no one has ever entered. You came to the gates. Open to me. But the gate is asking, Uwa Uwa me. The gate is asking, Uwa Uwa me. Did your father enter here? You and Did me. your mother enter here? Uh, Who in your father's house you and has me. ever entered there? Uh, Who in your mother's house has ever entered there? People of God, this is why you need to be in Omega. Because in other ministries, they will tell you seven steps to pass the gates, four steps to cross the gates, two steps to possess your possession. But when you come to Omega, hey, hey, we don't teach you one step, we don't teach you two step, we teach you one step in the year. Something must die for the gates to be open. Something must go down for the gates to be open. That is what the man said. He said, Lift up your head. All ye gates, be ye lifted up. Ye everlasting door. And the gates answer. Who are you? And he replied, The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Maybe you do put to my father. Maybe you put my mother. In the name of Jesus, open to me. 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 It will open to you. Your marriage door. It will open to you. Your next level. It will open to you. Your ministry door. It will open to you. Your career door. It will open. It will open. After now. Somebody say open. Look at it. The Bible says, they said it. They said, you can't come in here. They said, you can't come. The next verse says, they said it thinking. Somebody said they are thinking. Thinking that David can't come in. You will shock your father's house. Your wedding this year. Your wedding this year. Help, help. There is, there, I say your wedding this year. It will shock your father's house. Why? Please sit down, pastor. Sit down. Why would they be thinking that David cannot come? Your enemies are not just foolish. There is a reason why they will think that you can't marry. There is a reason I will think that everybody will be, you, you know, a nobody in your father's house. But I studied my Bible. In Joshua... Chapter 15, in verse number 63. You read. The Bible says, As for the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem. You all know this place? Huh? Where David is trying to enter. Huh? Rewind 1,500 years ago. The Bible says, When Israel entered the promised land and they began to divide the inheritance. The people of Judah, their allotment was to be in this tribe, in this land. When they took everything, they took all the land, 
But you read. He said, but as for the land of the Jebusite, the occupant of Jerusalem, the children of whom? Judah could not drive them out. They did everything they could. They could not drive. So they had to share the land. They cohabitated. May you not be a tenant in a house where you should be a landlord. You do understand? I am praying for you. May you not become a tenant in a land where you are ordained to be a landlord. Just sit down. So the Bible says the best they could do was to share the land until what day? This day. Five, 1,500 years later, a breaker by the name of David the stone the builder rejected, he emerged. And he went to the same land that his father could not enter, that his ancestors could not enter. When the powers looked at him, they said, are you not David, the son of Judah? We know your father. We know your grand-grandfather. We stopped him. We stopped him. If we stopped your great grandfather, we stopped your grandfather, we stopped your father. Who are you? Who are you? Go enter where your father could not enter. Who, how do you say it again? In, in huh? who are you? Who are you? This is where, this is where you sit down. This is where many make the mistake. They think now that in order to cross this gate, what they need now is a visa to travel to the UK. So they got a visa. They travel to the UK. They got there for the past seven years. Things are not okay. They ran to US. They've been there now ten years and they are useless. When authors are fighting you, if you run to Italy, you will eat leaves. Run to Germany, you will jam lead. Go to Russia, they will rush you back. Some are in Taiwan, they are tied them once. I will submit to you. It is at this junction that many pack up and they die. This junction. Man of God. Please, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I don't mean to insult. It is at this junction that many preachers end up. It is at this junction that many businessmen, they end up. They did everything but they could not cross the gate. And that is why if you are going to cross this gate, you need to connect to a brutal oye. An oil that does not negotiate. An oil that shoots first and asks questions later. An oil that does not pamper. It, it hammers. It doesn't manage. It damages. So listen to me. It is at this junction you say to yourself, I am an Omega child. People of God, if you are going to cross this gate, you need holy insanity, spiritual rascality, holy ghost brutality, no nonsensity. You jam me, you die. I jam you, you scatter. You monitor me. The people of Judah. 1500 years ago could not stop them do you know that David is from the tribe of Judah so the battles his father could not confront he had to confront it you are the breaker